Okay, for eight, it requires you to work with an ellipse. Now, how do I know it's an ellipse? Okay, well, one way I can tell when it's an ellipse is based on the way the formula is. If you see a plus sign with something equal to one, that tells you it's an ellipse. But let's suppose we didn't even know that. How can we tell if it's an ellipse or not? You can tell by what they're asking in the blanks here. If they ask for length of major, length of minor, that's only for ellipses where you're gonna see that being asked. Uh, so that's gonna be a hint right away of what kind of graph it is. So if you're not sure about this from the equation, just look at what they're asking, and that'll be another hint to tell you what kind of graph this is going to be. So this is an ellipse. Now for ellipses, the, the direction of the ellipse is determined by where the larger number is. If the larger number is underneath the X, it opens up sideways. If the larger number is underneath the, the Y, then we know it opens up and down. In this case, the larger number is underneath the X, which means we know it's gonna have to open up sideways. The way the formula works then is if it opens up sideways, the number underneath is your, is your A squared. The larger number is your A squared, so we set that equal, and we have the smaller number is equal to B squared. You wanna take the square root of both of those. So we take the square root of both, of both sides of each of those and we get six and four. We can also find out what our C value is. Now the formula for C, we know that we have A squared and B squared in there. Now if you're not sure whether this is plus or minus, remember that the sign you see here is always opposite the one you have in the formula. So if there's a plus here, that means this is going to be a minus. That's how you can tell. Uh, so when we put that in, we get 6 squared minus 4 squared, which is going to be 36 minus 16, which is the square root of 20. And the square root of 20 can also be written as 2 square root of 5. So 4 times 5, square root of 4 will come out and you get this. So this is all the work we can show to get the value for C. You wanna get down to this simplified version here as much as you can. So if you can break down the square root as much as possible, then you wanna do that, two square root of five. We have enough information to start graphing this. Now first, we have to know where the center is. Now notice there are no parentheses around the X and the Y, and when we see that happening, we know that it's gonna be centered at zero, zero. So, uh, when I draw my graph, I'm going to center it at 0, 0. Since I know it opens up sideways, the A goes in the direction that it opens up. So I have to, go to take the 6, I'm going to go to the left 6, I'm going to go to the right 6. And so what I just drew there, with the, when you use the A value, that's going to be your vertices. So your vertices are going to be at plus or minus 6, comma 0. So we go 6, comma 0 and negative 6, comma 0, and that's going to be your vertices. Now for the shorter direction, that's where we go for the 4. 1, 2, 3, 4 we go up, and 4 we go down. Now those aren't considered vertices. Vertices are only on the major axis that you see. So once you draw the A and the B, now we actually know what the general shape of this ellipse is going to look like. Looks like that. Now what about the, the foci? Now the foci, you want to find out what the uh, decimal equivalent is to 2 square root of 5. Now that's about 4.5 approximately. So what I can do from here is I can go 4.5 here, make a dot, 4.5 the other way, make a dot, 4.5, 4.6, somewhere around there and I can plot the, uh, the foci right there. And so that's what it looks like on the graph. Now, we have to write the coordinates for those. So what do we do? We, from the zero, we added two square root of five and subtracted two square root of five. When you write it as a coordinate, it'll be plus or minus two square root of five comma zero. And that would be the, the coordinates for the foci. The rest of these are just gonna be formulas. Length of the major is two times A, so two times six is 12. Length of the minor is two times four, that's eight. Eccentricity, the formula for eccentricity is always C over A. So we're gonna do uh, two square root of five 
over a, which is 6. And this can be reduced to square root of 5 over 3. A decimal is not necessary on this. If you wanted to write a decimal, it'd be about 0.75, but again, uh, you don't need to on this one. It's, it's okay, just leave your answer as square root of 5 over 3. So either way you want to express that for eccentricity, that's fine. So we have all the information filled out. We have the graph being labeled, and so this, this problem is complete.